How do you get back up from rock bottom, going back to that time mentally? Did we really struggle? Creating and posting this video is very triggering and slip ups are bound to happen in recovery. It's true, like a lot of other YouTubers or influencers don't talk about this stuff. What are your plans for the end of the year now that you're back in England? My mom and I are going to Paris. My 21st birthday, I will be spending it in New York. We're gonna have some really good vlogs coming up. What's your tip on feeling lonely and making friends? Would you date older? 10 year age gap. Favorite time of your life? How do you keep yourself motivated with your dream? If you put in 100% effort, there is no chance of failing. When is the haul coming? How do you deal with the shame of an eating disorder and how to finally ask for help? As much as I hated it, it was comforting to me. It was almost like a drug. I wanted help, but life without it scared me too. What's the hardest thing in your last relationship? How much weight have you gained since binge? eating. Is that rude to ask someone? And I'm very honest, would I accept weight gain if it meant being fully recovered from my eating disorder? Good morning guys! What's up? How's your day going? Today's video is going to be a Q&A. I mentioned in my last video I really wanted to follow up that with a Q&A video just in case you guys had questions about everything I kind of spoke on in my last video and then also just a Q&A in general because after being so inactive for the past year my aim has been to get closer with you guys. I feel like Q&A is always a great way to do that. I'd actually set up my desk really really cute to film this video and then I was like Mm, I want to get into bed. I want some cozy vibes with my dog. We have honey right here cuddling up. So go make yourself a drink, get some snacks. I made myself a yummy coffee. Lately, my at-home go-to coffee has been just plain coffee with a teaspoon of raw honey and a tablespoon of raw milk. I asked you guys to send in questions either on my YouTube comments in my last video or through Instagram DM, which if you're not following me on Instagram, what's wrong with you? India Grace House will go follow me. And you guys sent in some really great questions. So I screenshotted a bunch. We're going to answer them. I can't decide if we like start off with something lighthearted or deep because we've got a good mix let's go ladies starting with a positive question how do you get back up from rock bottom thank you for filming such inspiring videos oh thank you so much for watching so glad that my videos inspire you getting up from rock bottom if you haven't seen my last video which was about my story of hitting rock bottom go check that out i'll link in the description uh, this kind of actually goes in with another question which i was actually going to answer which is um how am i healing from everything that happened getting up from rock bottom it was not easy to say the least. I was struggling for a long time. Every day I just thought this will never get better and honestly I think the number one thing you have to do is put your pride aside. The first th thing is acceptance. Accept that whatever situation you're in right now is not working for you. you really just gotta go extreme and cut out whatever it is that is not serving you. As scary as it is, for me moving back to England felt like everything was for nothing. I felt like all the hard work I had put in to go out there had been a waste. I felt like by me giving up everything thing and coming back home to heal it really meant I had to put aside all my pride you know and accept that things really weren't working out but yeah I had to pretty much give up everything my gorgeous apartment that I loved my modeling for the time being I still want to go back to that Just everything let's say you're in a situation where your relationship's falling apart and you're not sure what to do about your career you're struggling with mental health these are all things that I went through and money problems this was I went through everything, all of this the past year, like so hard. First thing is to get rid of whatever's toxic and not serving you. For me, I am so lucky to be able to have come back home. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking things kind of slow and I'm almost doing what you would call a dopamine detox. I really would highly recommend doing a dopamine detox. It helps you mentally so much. I think I've talked about dopamine detox on my channel before a little bit, but it's all about simplifying your life, learning to kind of find the beauty in the smaller more simple things i think me automatically coming home from la is a huge dopamine detox you know when i'm out there in la there's always something going on whereas when i'm at home like like i was talking to my mom about this the other day she was going to work and sometimes when she goes to work i'll just go with her and she'll drop me off at the coffee shop near her work and i'll sit in there with my phone or my laptop and just get some work done just get a coffee and that is like the highlight of my day it's just finding beauty in the smaller things spending time with my mom has helped me so much having a support system is huge you need a support system cut off anything that's toxic and know that it's okay to start from scratch even if you feel like you have to give up everything and it's so scary it's okay to start from scratch moving home for me was the best decision i could have possibly made if i had just tried to keep my pride and stay and i would have just been struggling more so put your pride aside and know what's truly 
the best for you. I'm gonna go to my YouTube comments. You know, I'm looking through my YouTube comments on my last video and I just wanna say I have been so overwhelmed with the amount of support and love that I've received. It was such a scary video to post. I was so vulnerable in that and all the comments like have been so nice and you know, it was a very um, difficult video to make. It was very, very triggering for me. I know in that video I had said that I was two months clean of my like eating disorder, trigger warning, um, binging and being sick of just like my bulimia and everything. But making this video caused me a lot of anxiety. The whole process of filming it and editing it and kind of going back into that time mentally made me really struggle. And, and um, I don't know if I want to keep this in, um, but over the weekend I um, kind of fell back into my old ways a little bit and I really struggled the past few days. <sighs> God, I didn't think I'd be crying. Fuck. <laughs> Good thing my makeup thing is right here. <sighs> After two months I, I just had such an awful slip up and I think it was partly because of just going back to this mindset and you know going through my camera roll to pull up some clips and stuff that I wanted to insert into the video that whole thing like creating and posting this video was very triggering and you know slip ups are bound to happen in recovery kind of brought me back to that mindset of feeling like I had lost a lot of trust in with myself which I had built up so much trust the past two months all right I'm rambling but Despite having that slip up and uh, struggling the past couple of days, seeing all your comments, reading all the support and all the other girl- <laughs> Fuck. And just all the other girls commenting about how much my videos helped them and how it's made them not feel <laughs> so alone. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Oh my god. I don't regret. I really am so happy that I posted it knowing that I've helped other girls because it's true like a lot of other youtubers or influencers don't talk about this stuff I know I mean some people do but I feel like they don't they don't go into details with the struggles and the shame that comes with it it was a very very honest and raw video that I posted and I was so nervous but despite like, the slip up I had over the weekend from the anxiety of posting that video like all these um supportive comments have just really made it all worth it for me and it's really glad that I got to help you guys I know this isn't a question but I wanted to read one of the lovely comments I got on the video that just kind of made me cry when I was reading it. Someone said, India, I'm so proud of you. Everything you went through shaped you to be the woman you are and are going to be. Girl, you are so strong and courageous from moving to LA at a young age, coming back from that and being honest with yourself and vulnerable with us. India, you are the girl that walked into Ford and got signed when they weren't even taking walkthroughs. You are the girl that decided to have a relationship with her dad regardless of you being the child. 15 year old me looked up to you and 20 year old me still does. But now I appreciate your strength India. You have a beautiful heart and have grown to be an amazing young lady. You taught me confidence and to dream. I want you to know you are loved by your family and by God. Allow yourself grace, be kind to yourself and know that you are that girl. If you fall 10 times you'll surely get up 11. Go easy on yourself and if anything I've learned about you is that you aren't prideful. You went back to England instead of staying in a toxic space. You don't care to be right and that's beautiful. I'm proud of you India. That comment just meant the world. <sighs> I want you guys to know that you're not alone with your struggles, whether that is an eating disorder or whether it's just other things like relationship problems or, you know, not knowing what you're doing with your life or other issues like I go through them too and you're not alone and also not to compare yourself to social media influencers because I have a lot of problems too. As I said in my last video, I vow to kind of show more real side of things and not just the out of touch, non-relatable side. I really do appreciate every one of your comments and I read all of them. And to everyone that commented about how my video helped make them feel less alone, as much as I wouldn't wish upon anyone for them to go through what I'm going through, it's also comforting for me to know that I'm also not the only one that has been going through all these struggles. Anyway, I'm um, sorry I got sidetracked, but back to this Q&A. Someone asked, do you still go to a therapist? I haven't seen my therapist in about a year, <laughs> as you can tell. She was great. Uh, I just stopped doing therapy when I moved to LA because I didn't like doing Zoom calls and then I didn't find one when I was out there. They're very expensive. I'm not kidding, they're like $250 per session. They're not that great. So I have not seen my therapist in a long time, but honestly, I probably should. What are your plans for the end of the year now that you're back in England? 
England. So what, we only have like three months left. October is just more of me healing, chilling, staying at home. I don't really have any travel plans this month. Next month, November, I have some fun travel plans. Oh my God, I'm so excited. My mom and I are going to Paris. <laughs> We're gonna go for her birthday. So her birthday is the 19th. We're gonna go just for a couple days to Paris. So freaking excited. So yeah, expect a Paris vlog. And then very shortly after that, for my 21st birthday, I will be spending it in New York. <laughs> so excited. I just thought for my 21st birthday, I have to spend it in America. The last place I wanna spend it is LA. That's just not happening. Yeah. New York and it makes sense because my sister's out there so I'll have my sister and Regina is out there one of my really good friends Madison is gonna be staying with me as well <laughs> so excited and then December I'm probably gonna be home you know family I'm so excited for Christmas all the Christmas festivities I'm so excited for London in December winter wonderland oh we're gonna have some really good vlogs coming up where is your necklace from that you've been wearing recently it's gorgeous thank you I've literally not taken this off since I bought it it's from Swarovski what's your tip on feeling lonely and making friends. Being lonely and being alone, first of all, are two very different things. I, since moving back home, I don't have friends around here. Like, the only two friends I really have out here is my best friend Liv and then my other best friends Toby. Both gone off to university, barely seen them since being home. I literally only hang out with my mom and my dogs. Yet I don't feel lonely at all, but I do totally understand the feeling of like not hanging out with many people. First of all, learn be comfortable and not feel lonely hanging out by yourself enjoy your own company to my tip for actually like making friends because human interaction is still very important and when it comes to making friends you've got to put in 100 percent effort it's easy to feel sorry for yourself and be like oh why are people not trying to be friends with me but you got to go out and do it yourself i feel like i'm very good at making friends because i did online schooling from the age of like 13 onwards and that meant that if i didn't go out and make my own friends i wouldn't have any so for one you've got to have 100 percent confidence in yourself you have to carry yourself as if like people are obviously going to want to be friends with you because you're a fun person you know that's how you've got to think of yourself you know you can't think of yourself as what if i'm just a burden to them you can't be nervous about it i feel like you've got to like carry yourself as though you know people are going to want to be friends with you. Be inviting, be confident, Just learn to strike up conversation, go to coffee shops, join workout classes and make friends with the girls that you meet at workout classes. You don't try and put anyone on a pedestal and think, oh, they probably wouldn't want to be friends with me. Look, how they've already got all their friends. Everyone's in the same boat. Next question. Would you date older? Um, I've always dated older. That was only really by like a few years, two, three years. If you mean like older, older, I think the most I would do would be like 10 year age gap. I feel like that's a lot. Well, the guys my age right now are so... I don't know if I could date a guy my own age. Just so immature. Favorite time of your life. I originally screenshotted this comment. It's funny because I was thinking about it and like, what's crazy is my favorite times of my life looking back have always in the moment felt as if I was struggling, if that makes sense. Like for example, 2019 summer was emotionally very difficult. I was fighting with my mom a lot. I felt very alone, but like also 2019 summer, I look back and it was just like one of the most fun times of my life. That was a summer that I first ever fell in love and I feel like no one ever forgets that. Another time actually would be 2021 summer when I got cheated on. This is what I mean. In the moment, I felt like my whole world was falling apart. You no, know, I just got cheated on. I was heartbroken. But also, it was so much fun. Like, because I got heartbroken, went and stayed with my dad for a couple months. And that time was really fun. Went to New York for the first time ever. And I did a little solo trip. I did so much traveling. Okay, I think what I'm trying to say is I was learning so much about myself. I was putting a lot of time into myself. And just learning lessons and learning independence. And it was so much fun. And now that I'm looking back, I'm like, wait, am I in that era? Like, although I'm like struggling a little, I'm putting so much time into myself and like think I'm about to enter another one of those like really fun eras. Like 2021 summer autumn was so much fun. When I got signed by Ford and I went to New York, that was so much fun. How do you keep yourself motivated with your dreams? This is a good question because I, after moving back to England, struggled a lot with feeling like a failure. I just had a lot of self-doubt after moving back home. You know, I had a lot of dark thoughts being like, who was I to ever think I could dream big and do big things? 
things. Who am I to think that I could have gone out there and things would have gone well? Like, it is very easy to doubt yourself. But what's motivated me is knowing that I really truly can do anything as long as I'm confident and put my 100% effort in. It's so true. If you put in 100% effort, there is no chance of failing. It doesn't mean that there aren't going to be times of slip ups or aren't going to be times of struggles. I got another question that was, what was your biggest regret and your biggest right decision? You know, I was thinking about my regrets and I was like, I can look back at things that went wrong, but I don't have any regrets. And I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, mean that. I guess I could say getting myself into a relationship when I moved to LA. But then I was like, no, I don't have any regrets because I have learned some invaluable life lessons that I would not have learned if I didn't go through all of that, you know? It's gonna pull me out a stronger and smarter, wiser person. Where are you going to live next? Um, I know I keep saying that I wanna move to London and Paris and Tokyo and New York. And honestly, I don't know exactly where I wanna move next. One of those cities probably. London could be nice because it's close to home. New York is really nice because I have my sister there. So I'll have some sort of like support system and I'm still figuring it out. It really depends on what aligns with where I'm going next in my life. I'll figure that out probably more closer to next year. When is the haul coming? I know I keep saying that I have a big clothing haul coming and beauty haul actually. I'm gonna do both a beauty and clothing haul separate because it's way too much to do together. They are coming soon. Expect it beginning of November. I have a few other videos going up before but beginning of November. How do you deal with the shame of an eating disorder and how to finally ask for help? I understand that if you're struggling with an eating disorder, it can be very difficult to reach out for help, especially when I remember when I was at my worst, parts of me was scared to ask for help because I didn't know if I even wanted it. Like, no, I knew I wanted help and I knew I needed it, but I was also scared because I was like, I didn't know if I was ready for it. You know, I didn't know if I was ready to give up my eating disorder, if that even makes sense. Because as much as I hated my bulimia and my binge eating cycle, the thought of like, giving it up or like not doing it anymore was also scary because as much as I hated it, it was comforting to me. It was like, as I've said in my last video, it was almost like a drug. And the idea of giving that up is scary. I wanted help, but I, life without it scared me too. But honestly, you have to go to someone. So for me, when a couple days ago I had a slip up, I remember I was like literally in the middle of my slip up and I texted my sister. I didn't think she would even respond because she's in New York. But I texted her and I was like, can you call real quick? This is an emergency. And my sister, like, she doesn't always respond immediately. So I really didn't think she would respond, but she responded immediately and she was like, hey, yeah, you can call me. So quickly cleaned myself up and called her just bawling my eyes out and I was like I feel like such a failure I feel like I'm never gonna get better I don't know what to do I was like mom gets home in a couple hours from work do I tell her do I keep it to myself scared like she was like India this is what you came home for for support like mom will be there for you she'll help you like you need to tell her and I was like what if she's angry at me I was so embarrassed as of course my camera dies when I'm talking about something deep and I said like what if she's mad at me my mom would never be mad at me it's the eating disorder it just it tells you just keep to yourself and I'm so glad that I spoke to my mom and told her what I was going through. She came home and we talked and I was so scared to like tell her what had happened. I was ashamed of myself. You know, I thought I had done so well and to be struggling again. I was just so humiliated. She really did help me. My stomach was in so much pain and I hadn't felt that pain in a very long time. I had really forgotten how terrible it felt and how painful my eating disorder was. My stomach and my throat is still in pain from a couple days ago. She took me out and I got some soups to help soothe my stomach. She got me some tea. She's just been there for me last night. She gave me a little like face treatment and a little massage and she's just been the best. As scary as it is, you have to speak to somebody. What was the hardest thing in your last relationship? Probably just the the control aspect it was just a very like isolating relationship and I was already struggling so much with everything I was dealing with and just feeling so isolated from friends and family when when you're going through a hard time that's what you need you need friends and family you need a support system and I think that's what made it so hard is I just didn't have that when I was with him someone asked how much weight have you gained since binge eating I had quite a few questions asking this I was like is that rude to ask someone but I'm like whatever I always tell you guys ask me whatever you want and I'm very honest I gained about 
20 pounds. Yeah, the most was about like 20 pounds. Um, since I was 16, my normal weight has always been 120 pounds, give or take five. Sometimes on my skinny days, I would range 115 to 125. And when I developed my binge eating, I was at the most about 140. I have now lost about 10 pounds since healing from my binge eating. You know, I didn't binge eat for two months. So naturally my body is starting to go back to how it used to be. So I have lost 10 pounds just from eating healthier. I did get one comment that said, one question that asked, would I accept weight gain if it meant being fully recovered from my eating disorder? Well, the answer to that is yes. Since after going through puberty, my body weight has always been pretty slim. I've always ranged about 120 pounds, give or take five. My eating disorder was a binge eating disorder, not anorexia. And usually people think of recovery with eating disorders as like gaining weight. And for me, it's been the opposite just simply because of the type of eating disorder I had. The weight I had gained during my eating disorder, that was unhealthy weight. That was weight that my body's not used to. That was binge eating. It wasn't like anorexia where people usually lose a lot of weight and then when they recover, they have to go back to eating. They gain weight usually. Um, however, with my eating disorder recovery, I am losing weight. So whilst yes, I would be fine with gaining weight if that meant recovering, but that just for me isn't how my recovery will probably go. If you guys want to know how I've been healing and how I've been recovering, I think the number one thing that helped me recover was simply getting out of a toxic environment. When I was in an unhealthy relationship, I was just constantly on edge and stressed 24 seven and I didn't have my support system, which was, you know, family or friends. I was very isolated, as I said, which triggered my binge eating a lot. So automatically just getting myself out of that situation has automatically helped me so much, knowing that I have my mom to go to, also simply being in the countryside, go on my long walks when I'm stressed out. I have a lot less of an urge to binge these days. And then just like eating healthy, normal foods. If you guys want me to do a what I eat in a day and how I lost this 10 pounds, I can do that for you guys if you want to see but yeah, I think that's gonna be everything for this Q&A. Let me know what you guys want to see next. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Your support and love means way more than you think it does. And I just, I love you all so much. So follow me on Instagram. Bye.